Hey, good morning, folks. Uh, this is another episode of Backyard Bushcraft uh, with Welsh Woods and Outdoors. Can't get out again this morning, the weather's not too good, and besides, I've got uh, a joint of brisket beef in the slow cooker, and I'm doing Sunday lunch again, so <laughs> I can't get anywhere. So, down the shed it is, and I'm doing another follow up video on uh, my previous one, my Mora collection, and I said in the previous one that I do one on my axes and my saws. So, without further ado, Let's start off with the saws. Okay, so the first um, one of my saws that I'm going to show you is my Oregon folding saw. This is probably the first decent folding saw I picked up. And I've had this 25 years maybe. 24. But um, it locks in the open and the closed position. So it's safe in your bag. And if you look at the teeth get it to focus there we are you can sharpen these teeth with a chainsaw file so it's maintainable it's a carbon steel blade you can strike a ferro rod on the back of it it's a good bit of kit now I use this for a long time along with if I give you some examples that's a I don't know why I'm squinting every time I look at the camera it's a 21 inch barco um, dead dead wood blade on it and then if I go up in the sizes I've got quite a few of these as you can see in the photo 24 inch still with a guard on it's another 24 inch but a different slightly different shape on it and then my big boy which I was lucky to pick up this is a 30 inch I picked this up in a boot sale for five years ago and um, these are all bark or sun vic as they were in the day but if you're processing a lot of big wood in the camp and shelter building and such, the fold, don't get me wrong, the folding saws are great, but they're so easy to break. If you go in a bit too aggressively, you're getting tired, you can snap, you can bend the blade. Something like this then comes in, especially if you've got a fixed camp where you're spending a lot of time and you're always back at that base camp. Something like this, even the 30 inch one proper comes into its own if you haven't got, you know, a chainsaw or something. Then processing big wood. I know a lot of people go for the big silky katana boy things like that. Beautiful saw, very expensive. You pick up a, um, a decent bark or um, saw like that, bow saw. Uh, 15 quid or whatever. Anyway, so showing you the Oregon folding saw. I'm going to come up to now where the old faithful came out which i'm sure all you bushcraft uh, crowd use the barco laplander now this is another one when these came out this sort of revolutionized uh, the the folding saw in the bushcraft world they were great they're very strong they cut on the pull but you can push cut them as well um, it's one of those ones where brilliant for learners it locks and the teeth are totally covered as opposed to the Oregon, you can see there now we could still catch your fingers or kit in your bag on something like that. The saw teeth are totally covered. Again, locks in the open and the closed position. They're brilliant saws. You can't fault them. And the black coating especially makes a difference as well. So it doesn't gum up and stick in the cut too, too easily. Went for an orange one because you can easily lose those dark green and black uh, uh, Laplanders. Something like that, more visible. I'm going to go through quickly through these because I want to get through the axes as well. Right then, the next one I picked up, I show you, you know, a lot of people will go for um, the folding buck saws, like, you know, that Ray Mia sells, and a lot of people make them. I've made one or two myself, but I can't for the life of me remember where I've put them. But this is the saw probably out of any of my bow saws or bigger saws that I've used more than anything is my Bob Destrude's folding buck saw. Now this is an aluminium frame. I'll just take it loose carefully because I always leave the spare blade in as well just in case it breaks. So you've got, sorry see in the back of my head, so you've got the folding section And then that slots into that cut. This then slots 
into and you see it on camera into the back cut and then like a cam lock locks in place solid bomb proof these are absolutely brilliant now there are other makes out there and i can't for the life of me remember what they are there's my star in the back of the shot again i can't remember the other makes but they're basically the polite way of saying that they've ripped off this design but they're very good as well don't get me wrong but obviously if you hang on a decent when i get that in shot hopefully that'll come out there we are it'll come out anyway um this again is a sandvig or bark or uh, dead wood blade you can hear the tension on that <laughs> brilliant saw this has done quite a few trips again up to sweden with me loads of camping trips and i still take it every now and again i don't know if you can see then i don't see why my camera doesn't want to play today anyway it doesn't matter that is the bob dust rude folding buck saw right then spare blades <laughs> right what well, i'll do the next now the next one is this is another one i picked up years ago this is a wilkinson sword it's exactly the same as uh, the gerber one and everything or fiskars folding saw very sharp teeth this is a really lightweight saw and again it's safe because it packs away i haven't used that for a long time I completely forgot I had it because when I was looking for everything else I found this and I thought I'll check that in as well that's great when you're starting out and you can get the cheaper ones there's nothing wrong with getting cheaper stuff now you see this this is a copy this isn't a genuine this is a copy of a silky, silky pocket boy and I think it's a 130 mil blade I picked this up off the bay from China probably two years ago and yeah it's not it's not absolute perfect copy of a silky it's perfectly usable i'm only going to be cutting small branches a walking stick or a little cut for the spoon carving or whatever packs really small i.e pocket boy i picked that up and it cost me less than five pounds off ebay from china posted so if you're starting out there's nothing wrong with that now then if your budget is a bit tight that's something i picked up five six weeks ago in Lidl's, down the middle of Lidl Isle and it is a pruning saw with a sheath again i think i think it was like 6.99 now i've used this a bit i've tried it in the garden and things like that it's ideal as a garden saw again if you're starting out it's a nice nice straight edge blade and it's a reasonably aggressive cut but again similar to the like the silkies uh, it's a very comfortable hold nothing wrong with it it's not brilliant but for the sake of six seven pound can't fault that if you want something a bit better quality and you don't want to spend silky money samurai saws again this was another ebay purchase you can get samurai saws in this country and this is the c330 lh i'm hoping that comes out obviously it's a curve, it's a limbing saw, so it cuts on the pull cut. Again, it's an aggressive cut tooth. But I've used this quite a bit in the woods, and this is a really good saw. I think this was in the region of about 26, 28 pounds. And obviously the, the equivalent in a silky, 50, 60 pounds or whatever. So this is like half the price. And this is really good. It's a really good uh, quality steel. Again, with all these ones, with the silkies as well. Back of the back of the saw blade is a nice sharp 90. It'll take a fair rod and give you sparks. So you can cut your wood and light the fire with it. So that's another one. With a sheath, keep it safe. And this can hang on your belt. You've seen this in one or two of my previous videos. Let's go through to the silky. Sorry, I'm bending up the shot all the time. Right then. This is the one I tend to carry again on my person on my belt this is a silky pocket boy that's a proper silky pocket boy i picked this up of uh, ben and lois offered this is a 170 this is 170 mil blade this is the one i tend to use with my lois offered sheath and a custom dangler and then that then hangs off my belt because i've got the dangler as well but that's on the belt of my trousers 
so this stays on my person so if I go for a walk I'm going looking for wood for a bit of spoon carving and such this is what I carry with me and it's securely in the sheath fantastic they are don't get me wrong I don't know I've said there are cheaper alternatives you know if you start them out you can pick one of these Laplanders up for 16 17 pound or whatever maybe not the orange the green one these a little bit more you can pick these up as nothing wrong. I used it for years but I've gone over the silky now and I ain't going back they're handy to just leave in my bag if I'm in work or whatever and I go for a stroll and it's something over the path I'll use that in work or whatever but these that's another level yes you've got to be a bit more careful cut them with a pull cut you don't want to bend these because they'll snap whereas the Laplander you, you can bend and sometimes get away with it and straighten it but they'll never be the same again so my next silky is a Gomboy this is a 210, a 210 millimetre blade I hope that's coming up I don't know if that will come up the etching on the blade this was the first silky I bought um, Rob and Russ two of my best pals um, Rob had one of these and Russ got one and then I thought ah oh, well I'm going to jump aboard and get a silky as well and I'm glad I did not that I'm sponsored by silky anyway but hell if you want to sponsor me and throw kit my way I'm, I'm happy because it's bloody good stuff that's a gone by that's a crack in size that's sort of a really good all round size in comparison to the Lapland is a slightly longer blade but cuts so much better again flat so if you want to do a bit of craft work this I think is a medium it's not the finest as the medium cut but more than coarse enough to cut um, bigger stuff if you are cutting bigger stuff then potentially big boy you need to go up to the silky big boy this now I can't remember offhand I think this is probably a 30 centimeter but this is a beast cut in it's obviously the slight curve now I don't mind that it's not much of a curve but ideally I went it as a limbing saw as well not just for craft work so I didn't bother with the straight I went straight for this one um, fantastic so comfortable to handle yeah they're not cheap I think you pick these up for about 65 pound it's a lot of money if you want quality kit that's going to serve you well for years you have to pay for it but that's the biggest silky so i didn't go up to the katana boy sized um i'll explain to you later why you didn't but don't forget when you're carrying this kind of kit um especially the bob distribute buck saw but even this as well you can see a lot of people will be using these axe and saw cases now this is fine this will take up to um i think the 500 katana boy will just about get in here but my dust drill buck saw spare blades uh, my tgm uh, small uh, grill the bars and everything will all go inside this um this was made by uh, stephen henley of pool bay bushcraft he makes beautiful quality kit um i've had this for a while but it's still in mint nick because you know it's i've only roughly get a chance to walk every now and again um so it's worth getting something like that if you want to protect a good quality axe and so on carry your bits and bobs on the outside of your pack even on the inside anyway plus you love the, the retro look so i'm not going to say any more about the saws if you stick with me to the end of the video i will show you my one and all best saw that will outperform any of these but you've got to stick with me to the end right then folks axes so i thought first of all i'm going to show you the first proper in my mind first proper bushcraft axe that i bought um i had axes previously cheaper crappy ones i had an s-wing axe for for many years that was my dad's it is somewhere on the property here i can't remember where i put it um, anyway this was the first one I bought and this was a Vettelings can you see that there I hope you can get that in shot and I can't remember exactly which model it is but I used this for many years and I still use it sorry I'm scratching the midges are coming in through my open shed door but I use this for many years this has had loads of trips hand forged can you see it another hand forged head it's quite similar in size to a small forest maybe slightly smaller 
Um, the sheath's really good quality as well as a nice thick and it also comes with a belt dangler. But used this for many years, I just thought I'd show you the first one. So what I'm going to do with the axes, I'm going to go possibly go through them with sizing. So the first one is a... That wasn't me breaking wind, that was my phone vibrating. Um, this is a Grantsfors Brooks pocket axe. Now, I bought one of these many years ago when they first came out and they were quite cheap back then. You were picking these up for like 38 95 or whatever. I bought one thinking, oh, it'd be great for carving. And I used it a little bit and then I thought, ah, it's too small, it's like a toy. And I ended up selling it and I bring them by in the wilderness gathering. And then the prices for them went up and they kept going up and up and up. And then I think at one point, they were, I think these are retailing the last time I looked. They're up close to £100 for these now. But I managed to pick this up in a trade on one of the pages on Facebook a couple of years ago. I, I bought this with something else and I ended up getting it for, I think it worked out, it only cost me about £45. I bought it thinking I'll put it away for my son to use uh, when he was little or whatever. Never got him to use it. This is just sat in my kit box. So it doesn't really get used. But it's worth keeping anyway. They're lovely. It's a lovely quality little axe. But that's the smallest one I've got. So if I go up the next size, um, it's probably this one is the Gransfors Outdoor Axe. Now you saw me doing a kind of shootout video between this one and the wildlife hatchet if you haven't seen it I'll try and pop a link up above so that um, you can go through to the video or just check my previous videos this is the uh, the Lars Falt designed Grantsfors Brooks outdoor axe again if you watch that video I'll point out if you look at my axes I've, if, I've either got no lanyard or a really short one just to hang it up because they're dangerous. I think it's dangerous to have one anyway because when you're chopping away it's so easy to get that caught and this can come out of your hand you can get a nasty accident. I prefer not to but sometimes it's handy if you're working or like in a workshop or if you're in a hut or something and you just want to hang it up on a peg that you've made or a, or a shoot of a branch or whatever with the mask on obviously. Outdoor axe. This is designed by Lars Falt. The more I'm getting to use this axe, the more I'm liking it. When I first had it, I thought, oh my god, it's really small. It's like almost like the pocket axe size. If I get that back out. See, if you look at the head, it's, it's not a massive amount bigger. But a lot longer handle and it obviously is heavier now if you look at the profile of it this is really fine so yes you could use it for um, carving small stuff but then the outdoor axe has got more of a beefier edge in it designed for splitting I'm just going to put the masks back on these as I go along just so when I'm moving things around I don't really want to slash my finger on the camera anyway outdoor axe I'll maybe cut these little bits in between. Right, next one. This again, like I said on a previous video, and I haven't cleaned it up yet, so this needs a nice clean and oil in again. Grants for wildlife hatchet. This is a lovely axe to use. I've had this a long time, like I explained in that previous video. They're beautiful quality axes of Grants for and I there are other makes are available. Don't get me wrong, I've got another make there, two other makes that I'll show you. Three of them, eggs <laughs> can't count anyway. Grants for wild Grants for's wildlife hatchet. My cat's just come in again. Um, again, hand forged head, and a lovely hickory handle. And it's just such a delight to use. I carved with this for many, many years until I got my uh, carving axe, which I'll show you later. So that's that size one. So I then came up to my small forest axe now you can see this has had a lot of use it's been sharpened it's I look after it this is the one I took out in to Sweden last September I didn't get to go out this year obviously because of all that's going on but this is the one I took out to Sweden last year this is a perfect all-rounder now if you want an all-rounder axe to do a bit of carving limbing splitting 
and shelter building, bit of everything, this, in my opinion, is the one to go to. If you're going to be working in potentially like a northern forest, Canada, Sweden, Finland, whatever, going into colder climates, then you need to go bigger because you're not going to be spending time carving, doing stuff like that. Um, but this is an all-rounder. I can carve with it, but it's not something I want to carve with for too long because obviously it's it's a much beefier, bigger handle. It's not meant for that, but it's a perfect, brilliant all-rounder. And yes, most people in the bushcraft scene have got them. There's a reason why, because they are shit dot. Anyway, the next size up. This now is the Grand Sports Scandinavian Forest Axe. Now, this is bigger again than the small Forest Axe. It's a slightly larger, heavier head and a longer handle. So, if you look at it, it's from palm to armpit to me. This is what Moors would class as a boy's axe. This is a boy's axe size. Now, this is a delight to use. I love splitting when I bring uh, when I got firewood and stuff to do at home here. Yeah. And if we're going up in colder climates, there's a lot of wood processing. This is an absolute beast. I love using this. Slightly longer handle. If you can do rattling, my cat's having a good nose around the shed and looking for mice. Anyway. That's the Scandinavian Forest Axe. Now, there are other axes available, like I said. This one now is a Helco work with just a sheath I knocked up myself. It's a nice sized little hatchet. The nice pro, this is, this is a strong feeling axe. Now, this is one I'm just keeping at home really for doing splitting kindling and things like that down. I was lucky enough when I went to the Bushcraft show, the Bushcraft magazine show, um, Helco Work were there and I got this from their bargain bucket. Now, when I looked at it, I checked it all over and I had to ask the guy, I said, well, what's wrong with these axes? I said, this was £10. Now, I think on the stand, I'm not sure the supplier that actually sells these. I can't remember offhand anyway. Um, these are, well, that's a 600 gram head. This, I think, sure, this retails are like 60 quid dot. I had it for a tenner from a bargain bucket. And he said basically it was just down to the finish. And at the edge, it had um, a crappy edge in it basically. And I thought, well, I can sharpen that up. And after looking through it, I just thought it's hung perfectly. I'll have that for a tenner. And then I walked over to the um, the chap the tall mech um, sharpening wheel stand, and then uh, when I caught the guy's eye, then when he was doing a demo, I asked him, "Look, can you sharpen axes on the tall mech machine?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, see, can you put an edge on that?" And I gave him the axe, and within less than oh God eight minutes, I don't know if you can see it, he put a lovely edge on it for me. So I got a £10 axe, and I got it sharpened professionally for nothing. See, if you're not cheap, if you don't ask, you don't get. Anyway, obviously I had to just make a mask for it, because it was too dangerous to leave without. But like I said, Helco work, uh, Germany, these are made. Lovely quality again. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a bit of a snob beside the Vettelings, or Gransfors. And talking of Vettelings, my, like I said, my first one was. I got this then. Now this, I got this year. That you can't get these anymore. Unless obviously somebody's trading it. This is a Vettelings Bushman axe designed by Les Stroud. And this has been um, basically modified then by Toby in Red, Cl Red Kite Leatherworks, who made the sheath. And if you saw my previous video with the, with, um, the Mora Knife collection, he's the chap that makes the sheaths and, uh, that I had for my Mora Knives as well. But he then scorched, I rubbed it down, scorched the handle made a much better sheath for it this is the Vettelings Bushman and this is a this is a beefy bruiser this isn't for carving <laughs> this has got a nice chisel head this is meant for basically exploding logs apart it's a lovely axe it's pretty as well so that's a nice retro looking they don't make them anymore like I said if you um, if you want one then basically you're gonna have to get it second hand in a trade or whatever they do come up but Anyway, if I'm chopping and splitting firewood at home, which I have to do regular because we get the fire in the house, yes, sometimes I'll use my Grantsfors. 
um, I'll use the small, uh, the Scandinavian folder sacks and things like that. But when I got proper splitting to do, then you need something a bit bigger. Now this is, I wouldn't even class this as probably a three quarter axe. This is a, an old Sandvik uh, three and a half pound head on a hickory handle. And this is an absolute beast. This was my dad's. Now my dad's got older axes and things like that I'm going to renovate and I got a beautiful ash board there and I'm going to make an axe for my my father's axe that was his father's and my dad when he done his trade when he was in his teens he made a handle for it and my dad's nearly 90 now so I need to rehandle it and clean it up but anyway this is a lovely axe absolute bomber for smashing the logs apart this is this is something to take a tree down with and I want to and I'm going to <laughs> but anyway that's a nice certain axe but then if I've got a lot of split dinner do well what better than to use a splitting maul now with this one yes I said like that um, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to axes when it comes to something like this I thought I don't tend to use it a massive amount look at that check that bruiser out now this, you wouldn't want to drop this on your foot because it's good by foot. This is a Husqvarna sledge axe. Now I can't remember, I'll, I'll Google it and I'll pop it on screen. But I think from memory this is probably about 4 kilo. So it's probably an 8-9 pound head at least on a hickory handle. I think they're made in the Hulterfors factory. It's basically exactly the same as the Hulterfors split in more or sled jacks i think this is a skavan sled jacks it's literally the fit and finish now the, this all i'd have to do is rub this down the handle everything's exactly the same down to the stamp down to this the only thing is different is that that's actually been stamped with a skavana badge what a bomb you want to see this smashing the logs apart <laughs> it's an absolute beast Yes, I can get an electric, electronic or electric um, log splitter. Where's the fun in it though? It's like if I was doing, if I was splitting constantly, I was every day, then fair enough, I get an electric one, but I'm not. You want something that's just fun and it's a good bit of sweat and a good worker. But that I picked up for, from memory, under £70 pound poster to the house. Now the Grants was Brooks splitting mall. Yeah, it's got a nice uh, steel collar similar to that outdoor axe I showed you earlier but they're like 150 pound that's like 65 I'm literally I might be smashing a wedge in the tree when I'm dropping it with a chainsaw and then splitting logs it's just dirty work why do you want to spend 150 pound on it I mean this is fantastic right probably the last axe I'm going to show you is my favorite axe now I love my grants fours but like you've seen in my other videos and you've seen me using this I do a lot of carving and this is my pride and joy to carve with this is my Hans Carlson Sloyd axe there's the Carlson stamp this is an absolute pleasure to use I love carving with this there's nothing wrong with carving with any one of those axes and I did for years but I enjoy the spoon carving so much I thought I'm going to get myself a proper one. These don't come up very often. I think with the Carlson uh, factory, they tend to set up their production run for one thing at a time. So they'll do a run of carving axes for a short period or whatever. When they're done, they'll go on to chisels, then they'll go on to something else, then on to something else. They aren't making these all the time. They're only now and again they'll do a run. They go out there. This is an asymmetric grind. Or symmetric grind, sorry, not asymmetric. It's basically the same size barrel either side you can get a right and a left hand i've had a right handed um grants for's carving axe lovely axe got rid of it because if i'm doing a lot of straightening work and i'm building a log carbon fair enough but i know i wanted it for carving so i needed the dual grind and then i got this instead oh what a difference you can choke up lovely look at that's like it's um viking bearded shape i love axes but this from a for carving is beautiful they're not cheap i think if you're lucky to get hold of one now you're going to be up up in the 180s now there are other makers i make stunning axes and i'd love to get some of the other ones uh, woodsman's finest now max uh, maximilian 
Um, he's doing uh, a run of axes with Svarajic um, Forge in the Ukraine, I think it is. Stunning axes. Um, there's other people I follow as well that are like so good creations. He makes some stunning stuff as well. I'd love to have some of those axes, but I'm like, I use this. And I'm like, what, what for? That's perfect. Absolute perfect carbon axe. Anyway. I'm just going to mask these up and then I think I'll show you my ultimate saw which you've been waiting for as well so if you're a bushcrafter I'm going to show you the saw that will end all saws okay folks you can see my array of tools and everything spread out in the background thank you for watching I hope um, you've picked it picked something up that uh, you might see a different saw that you've never seen before whatever or axe and yes my collection grows I love using the tools anyway. I love my knives, don't get me wrong, but I love axes. <laughs> I, could re I could easily buy loads of them if I had the money. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, I want to get the numbers up. You can share my videos to other channels, get my uh, content out there if you want, it's no problem. Anyway, I hope you appreciate it. Oh, there's one thing I need to show you, my ultimate saw. Now you've seen my axe collection. I've gone through the saws and stuff, but there's one saw now that I reckon, and Rob, if you're watching this, there's one saw here that'll outdo any of your saws, even the Katana boy. Now this what, nice lightweight folding saw. Yeah, baby. You want a decent saw? Yeah, cha-ching. That's the one to go for. No, I don't care if it's not lightweight, it's loud, and it takes loads of stuff down, big, thick stock. Better than a silky any day. So I hope you liked that. Just want to put it back in my uh, in my carrying box. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come again soon. There's more content. I'm gonna try and get this edited now today for you. I've got to get in a peel veg you now and get the Sunday dinner on. That's my Sunday. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.